Uh, Robert Igena. I hope I have pronounced the name correctly. Um, he's the National Chairman of the Duong Youth and Development Association. Now he's joined us um, here on the set and uh, he's going to help us to get into this conversation. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank it's you. It's really fantastic to have you here with yeah, us. It's my pleasure. Um, so, the let me let me just uh, situate this conversation a little bit more clear for our, our viewers to understand now bone setting is a specialized area of health care that's right now there are many um, situations that will have uh, road traffic accidents uh, people falling down from trees um, from buildings scaffolding all kinds of things can happen you break your bones yeah. There are only a few people in this country who have the ability to do what these people do. Prof, give us the history of this bone setting center um, and how you got involved, how it all began. Well, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank your viewers, uh, greet them, and also to say hello to my people in the village of Duong okay. in the Nadoli district of the Upper West Region. Mm. Uh, I believe by now they are all watching this program. Um, well, uh, as you have said, the practice of uh, traditional bone setting yeah. is uh, such an old traditional practice in my village, mm. Duong. Mm. And uh, we cannot even remember when it started. Okay, But it's a uh, a traditional practice that has some mystical aspects of it because those the household that practices it mm. uh, does it solely um, over time okay yes and uh, they have inherited it from their ancestors okay yes so it's a it's a traditional practice that has been there and uh, as we grew up we saw this practice going on and uh, before 2011, uh, if you went to the village, you would see that they were continuing to practice that traditional healing, mm. as you said, of fractures, mm. sprains, and so on. Uh, but then in conditions that were not the best. Okay. Well, I remember I have some pictures showing yeah, the sure dilapidated we'll look at uh, structures in okay. which they were mm. uh, practicing this. So. Uh, but since this has been a very uh, recognized traditional healing uh, provided by the people from Duong, mm. uh, certain people gave that practice recognition okay. and decided to provide support, particularly the then MP of the Nadoli uh, Kaleo district, uh, Honorable uh, Albert Babin, okay. who uh, currently speaker, exactly current uh, yeah. right honorable speaker of the Ghana Parliament. Mm. He was able to provide some structures to accommodate the patients okay. who came from far and near uh, for treatment. Mm. Uh, this was a very significant contribution to the development of the traditional practice. Then later, still before 2011, uh, uh, DANIDA, the Danish International Development Agency, mm. also recognized this practice and also came in to provide further infrastructure mm. uh, to accommodate uh, the patients there, you know, but uh, they only provided the accommodation. Mm. There was no uh, other facilities. Okay. There weren't any other facilities like uh, uh, beddings, uh, crutches, wheelchairs, and so on. You know, individuals had to provide that. So uh, what happened was that uh, uh, when I came back from my studies in 1992, uh, I had some friends from Holland who came along with me to visit my hometown. And uh, we saw that uh, the situation could be better. Mm. And indeed, one of the um, patients we met uh, called Gabriel Kweku Jiang, okay. who hails from the uh, Brongahaf region, the then Brongahaf region, mm. uh, appealed for assistance. And this is a gentleman who, uh, as you said earlier, was involved in a motor accident, okay. went to hospital, and uh, his condition was such that the doctors even wrote him off. I see. You know, they thought he would die. Mm. So some relatives heard of Duong, and they decided to send him there, where he was taken care of. Over time, he was fit, 
Wow. And he has since stayed in the village. Wow. Fully treated, uh, healthy. Wait, what, you, what, what did you just say? You said that he, he came from the former Brongahafu region. Exactly. He, he got his healing yes. in Duong. In Duong. And decided to stay in to the stay village. there. And wow. not only did he stay there, he, he got married to a lady from the village. Wow. Okay. And right now, if you go there, hmm. he's still living there. In the, within the uh, 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 premises the of the bone setters okay. in the village. You know, and the one time when I went home, uh, I don't know how he managed to train himself to repair mobile phones for the villagers, <laughs> you know, as a way of earning some, some income. Yeah. So he's one of those patients who made a fervent appeal to, to us because then I was representing Equal Opportunity Fund for youth education. We were involved in youth education at the time, mm. you know. Uh, so he appealed to us to uh, provide better facilities okay. uh, for, for the patients, yeah. meaning not only the building, in fact, a better uh, uh, facility, facility yeah. with all uh, everything that is required to mm. make it modern. Okay. And okay, Prof, yes. before you continue, yes. let's take a look at the, a short video of the gentleman that Prof is referring to. That's right. I've been in um, this bone setting clinic, doing bone setting clinic for quite a number of year, years here. Yeah. I'm the oldest patient here. I'm in that. I came here with a very terrible condition. An accident case put against or affected my spinal cord. And it was very useless when I came here. And doctors predicted that I could not make, I cannot make it. I can't go beyond three months. But after I located here and came, gradually, gradually, now I am I'm very fit. I am not able to walk to my satisfaction yet, but I am very strong that I can do almost everything that a man can also do. And we lack a lot of things here. And we are calling on uh, NGOs and uh, benevolent organizations to come to the aid of the bone setting clinic. Because what they are doing cannot be compared to any hospital in terms of bone in, in this country. They, they reject patients from different parts of the country. Currently, we have patients from Kumasi, Asante region, Greater Accra, wherever, all over Ghana. This facility. So we are begging and, and, and urging all well-meaning Ghanaians to come and assist, complete the project. All right, so he's making reference to, at the end there, a, a project that you're currently working on yeah. and that needs um, assistance to sort of bring it to fruition. That's what you're talking about. That's right. Okay. Yes. So uh, he said it all. There was a need to uh, upgrade the infrastructure that was there mm. provided by uh, the then Honorable Alban Babin mm. and Danida. And uh, so we bought into uh, the idea of... Uh, uh, actually building a more modern facility. Okay. Yes. And the concept is that... Uh, so have we, you started? Yeah, we started. In okay. fact, indeed, we started in 2011. Okay. Yes. And uh, mm. we had to acquire... Oh, so that's what we're looking at, right? Exactly. Okay. So that was, uh, you know, since 2011, mm. we're receiving funding and the work went on more or less slowly. Okay. And then uh, last year, we, we got more funding to actually complete mm. a, a part of it because it's quite a, a big yeah. a structure. Yeah. You know, five blocks uh, wow. with a, a, a kitchen and laundry section okay. and so on. So the concept was that we should have a, 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 the traditional bone setting mm. associated with a orthodox medical practice. Okay. So that is what I'm, we are aiming at. Okay. So that is why it's actually mm. a, a big facility. Yeah. You know. Okay. And so uh, you're hoping that eventually Apart from the traditional bone setting healers, yes. you will also get maybe orthopedic surgeons exactly. and others on the same premises, yes. in the same facility. Exactly. So we need, we need to have a doctor, yeah. nurses, yeah. and so on. Because as you would imagine, some of the people who came with fractures, mm. uh, traditionally they were treated without any anesthesia, yeah. you know, which <laughs> can be very painful. painful. You know, so yeah. if the two uh, collaborate, mm then when people come with uh, whatever sprains, fractures, and so on, 
at least uh, they can have some anesthesia mm. and the treatment can be done yeah. uh, and then the patient will suffer less, mm. will have less pain. Mm. Yes, yeah, so uh, that is the idea and uh, this started with the Doon Youth and Development Association okay. which is at the forefront mm. of, of the project and we appeal to uh, our friends in the Netherlands, okay. Equal Opportunity Fund in the Netherlands, mm. uh, as well as a, a Dutch NGO called Wilde Ganze, okay. that is Wild Geese, okay. that is the English translation. So uh, they told us that we have to make sure that we put certain conditions in place, including properly acquiring land in the village mm. because they didn't want any litigation yeah, after they course. supported project <laughs> yeah. that would have uh, problems. Mm. So we were able to have a, a land, a, a deed of gift from uh, um, uh, the owners of that area where the project is okay. and that was in 2013 and uh, so the, the structure is made up of uh, uh, an administration block with mm. a physiotherapy section, okay. then three wards, mm. and then uh, another block with uh, three consulting rooms mm. uh, and an X-ray uh, section okay. because when they come with fractures, yeah. you need to look at exactly what's going to on. see what. Yeah. They, and that is where the collaboration again comes in mm. between orthodox practice yeah, and the traditional the practice. They can do an X-ray yeah. and so on. Fantastic. You know, exactly. Prof, so yes, that is it. If you just, okay. Yes. Good. So so um, at this point, I think that we we can call on the Ministry of Health, yes, um, the government to um, step in. I mean, the uh, president already has said that he's looking to build more health facilities across the country. Anyway, absolutely. You know, so then in doing community, I think this is one of those places that should be adopted. Yes. You know, and then immediately. Uh, kitted and, and, and fitted, yes. you know, to be a, a, full, a fully functional space. Absolutely, that yeah. is what we are looking forward okay. to. And uh, so, as I said, the building is made up of five yeah. blocks, yeah. and that is a lot of money to mm. complete. Mm. So uh, later, our sponsors advised that uh, we should complete part of it and make it operational. Uh, pending further support mm. uh, to actually complete all the five blocks. Yeah. So at the moment we've completed uh, one block, uh, the administrative block mm. and uh, another block um, uh, which will make it operational mm. and that is wha where we really need uh, government support. Yeah. Uh, and indeed to really make it operational we called on the uh, World Diocese and Health Service mm. uh, to provide support because the section that we want to make operational with all the equipment that we have uh, ac acquired from uh, the support given by our sponsors, yeah. um, we, we need to uh, get staff to as well uh, to, doctor to and nurses place. and yeah. so on. To, so the Dyson Health uh, uh, Service is partnering with us mm. to actually uh, provide uh, the staff. Okay. Yes. Right. Uh, without which the thing will not they be operational. Yeah. And we are very grateful to the Bishop of Wa for buying into the concept. We have uh, drafted an, a memorandum of understanding mm. which they are looking at. Okay. And we hope that before the end of this month, yeah. uh, they will be able to let us sign it okay. so that the, the, the project, the clinic, can start mm. operating somewhere. In, uh, in February. Fantastic. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. So we will need yeah. a physician assistant, a midwife, an administrator, mm. and an accountant uh, to, to start mm. uh, uh, the project uh, mm. uh, running. So we need to have government support to complete the rest of the blocks mm. and also in the short to medium term mm. to have uh, uh, nurses' quarters or doctors' quarters, yeah. uh, as well as other facilities that will make the staff mm. comfortable All and right. operate. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes. Um, so, Prof, you yourself, you you're lecturing at uh, UDS. No, no, no. I have been lecturing since 1992 at the University of Ghana, uh, teaching French. Okay. Yes, okay. I retired in uh, mm. uh, 2018. Yeah. Uh, did a two-year contract. Okay. At the end of which, uh, I decided to. To bow out. Okay. Yes. So uh, I'm now. Uh, well, thank you for what you're doing. Yeah. Thank but before I go, I would yeah. like to uh, thank uh, uh, Wild Geese in the Netherlands, mm. uh, which is the main funding ag agency. Yeah. And our good old friend, uh, Mrs. Annie Artsmanders, who uh, is uh, the chair of the EOF, uh, okay. Equal Opportunity Fund in the Netherlands. 
and uh, also of the private initiative that is there. Okay. And also our major sponsor, sponsor uh, uh, one lady, Pia Learson, uh, who unfortunately passed on uh, last year. Okay. May her soul rest in peace. Yeah. She has provided uh, a lot of support through the uh, uh, organization. Uh, of time. I'll also yeah. thank the elders of and uh, of Duong and the, those who gave the land, yeah. uh, as well as uh, um, the manager, uh, Mr. Hector Awana, yeah. the, uh, the the the, the contra contractor contractor right. and thank others. You. Thank you very much. Prof. Yes. Okay. So we've been speaking with Prof. Robert Nina, uh, Nina, who is the national uh, chairman of Duong Youth and Development Association, and he's brought all this uh, very important uh, facility to light. And um, we call on the government and the Ministry of Health um, to take a look at this and uh, see what we can do to, you know, fully make the place functional. We'll be right back. Uh, it's a pleasure. We'd like to thank uh, CTF. <laughs>